What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. This right here is going to be a gray zone warfare video. We're going to be breaking down the raw footage and not just breaking it down. Y'all have seen a million videos already. We're going to be showing you things you more than likely missed. So I'm going to be really rapid fire with this, guys. I'm not going to go through this whole cinematic breakdown. It's, you know, I'm just going to give it to you pretty raw, man, you know, straight up. <laughs> so stamina bars, left and right. Left is going to be arm stamina. Right is going to be sprint stamina. We have a character portrait. We saw that dip. We don't really know if that was food or water related. We're pretty confident it wasn't blood related. I have I have a whole team, guys, working on this. So like this is a whole compiled thing. While we're on the topic, guys, make sure you check out the Discord below. I'm gonna put it in the description. We have a collective group of people, FPS gamers, solid guys so far. Make sure you check that out. We'll be glad to have you. The ambience of the game is very quiet and immersive like with the frogs and stuff like that. Other people have touched on that, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. We've seen dirt roads, forests, mud, different type of gameplay impact based on how you're walking. Will it later affect movement? speed based on what type of terrain you're on are there going to be audio advantages and disadvantages with each to be determined right the sniping looked great we only saw five five six platforms um even with him using the uh it looked like a vortex razor um, but it was on a five five six platform everything we've seen from the the actual PMCs was 556. Five, we have yet to see like a DMR or any type of semi automatic, you know, 308 round marksman rifle. We haven't seen anything like that yet. I'll get to some other guns that we discovered that I have not seen anyone make a video on yet. So you'll be the first to see it here. And with sniping, I know this is kind of interesting. So with the sniping, he never lined up headshots. I believe his name was Dave MFG, mopping the floor with him with just shooting them in the body, which I thought, you know, was pretty accurate. You know, the whole headshot thing has kind of come with like headshot multipliers and things like that with games. But really with sniping, you want to aim center mass, right? I mean, really with any gun, you want to do center mass first, right? So I thought that was accurate how they were playing it and how the AI is reacting to it. Beautiful. So second gun, being able to carry two guns. We've kind of seen this in trailers and other teasers and stuff like that, but having the gun attached to a a backpack a sling on a backpack it's not a second slot you know that goes on your back the backpack itself will or will not have the ability to attach another weapon that's awesome so in this quick timestamp they gave me again guys a team working on this with me you can see your pov you can see the pov of the guy he can examine his squad mate they haven't opened this in any of the frames, anything that I've seen, they haven't done this. Is it going to be just to check his health? Is it going to be to give him any type of medical assistance? Is it going to be to look into his bag? Like, let's say he's, you know, suppressing fire or he's healing himself. And he says, hey, man, you know, reach in my bag and get another mag or reach in my bag and get yourself a surgical kit, whatever, you know, something like that. We don't know, but it, it's interesting to see it. We had audio from your teammates being injured, different levels of audio, whether it's a minor injury or a major injury. We heard the different levels of audio that your character and your teammates would give out based on the severity of their injuries. Let's talk about the safe lock real quick. They have some type of container, gamma safe container that they never put anything in. And now I know they're testing the game and they don't really need to, but kind of curious what can go in there and what can't. Can everything go in there? Can some stuff go in there? I don't know. So we saw the blood sets. There's nothing really to say. Very realistic, very cool awesome mechanic. Remember guys, your health is based on your blood. So the arm stamina, we have an icon. Yellow stamina means the bar is almost empty. The red icon with the hand means it's completely depleted. Your weapon's going to sway. You're not going to be able to aim, right? We got a couple icons, not just the bar that can represent that mechanic. So now this is one of my favorite things, the tent to the scopes. So the Holosun that he's using, I believe is what it was, had a lot of red tint based on the lighting that was it was hitting, right? Near the end, when they discover a new LZ, they get an alert, a sound alert, just like they did when they picked up the phone for the mission and they get XP. You can see it at the bottom right of the screen right here. They discovered an LZ. So you're going to be able to discover different locations, which we kind of already knew about, but LZs are part of that too. When you discover LZs, you get XP. Really neat. So in your character screen, there's a pocket and a gear belt slot, which is a little bit different than Tarkov, kind of UI. It's very similar to Tarkov, not the game guys, chill out, chill out. Don't come for me, but like the UI of, of how they look into their character and look into their bag and stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool to see pockets and a gear belt slot, two separate things. What I'm curious about is why the pockets have a dotted line around the icon. Kind of curious what that means. So we have different fire rates. We see that pop up on the screen. We also see after they pick up the sub objective, there's a quick second where you see an icon hover above the window. You can open the windows. Really cool, especially for an early access for something like that to already be in there. So one thing I thought was cool, and I'm kind of digging a little bit here. Well, y'all can blame Mango for this one. I don't really know if there's anything to it. So if y'all are in the collective, just give it to him. 21 minutes, 12 seconds. They call for the helicopter at 2207. The helicopter radios moving out ETA one minute, which is 55 seconds from when it departs. So the ETA being one minute, I know it's military talk, estimated time of arrival, but will fighting in the LZ, will that dictate how the helicopter 
X with you. If you're getting shot at, if you're fighting, will the LZ and the ETA change? Will it be too hot where they can't land? How will that work? We were, were kind of curious with them being really specific with the time of what you're, what the pilot's saying about arriving, if it can be altered. So we do believe that the LZ, it'll auto detect which LZ you're closest to, whether you're, you know, one to one and a half clicks away, I don't know. And when you call the Hilo, it'll automatically go to that one. You don't have to pick which LZ, it's gonna go to your closest one. So this is one of my favorite parts of this video because no one's talked about this, even though it's right there, bright and red and everything. We see ground zero. The scale of this map, I wanna dive into this just a little bit. Gecko did a video recently on this. We actually had a pretty good conversation about it. The scale of the map and what we're looking at with the POIs, I personally believe, like when they zoom out right here, that's really the southern half of the map. I don't know if it's the, a quarter, but I would, I'm would i willing to bet it's about half. It's a 2.1 2 zoom. It's about half. So if we double the POIs, guys, and say there's six, plus ground zero, that's seven. The PvP is probably going to be pretty frequent and not as lax as what people originally thought, because if you divide the player base, just about every time you go out, there's going to be another team or a few teams at the POI that you're going for, right? The LZs seem to be located around the point of interest. So that's where people are gonna be coming and going. They're not just gonna be roughing it across mountains and hills for no reason, really. So yes, the map is 42 square kilometers, but if you break it down, I mean, like you got maybe 12 or 14 that's gonna be hot pretty much all the time with potential PVP. So that's something to think about. We don't know how many total points of interest there are, but when we're looking at this scale, we can kind of guess, right? So we see the blue dots for the first time on the map. That's his squad mates. So I thought that's pretty cool. I wonder if that will also show your faction one day. I hope not. I hope you have to figure that out in the field, but will you at least get to see where your teammates are, which I think is, is good. I know people complain about it. it's not realistic, blah, 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 but there is technology out there, man. We can see that. So I'm cool with it. So the LZ icon actually appears on the compass while they're waiting for the helicopter to come in. So you can't lose it, you know? So one thing here, we found a new gun no one's talked about. AJ is in our Discord. He actually found this and sent it to me. So props to him. Shout out to him. But it's coming off one of the dead AI. Laying on the ground, clear as day. It's a scorpion. Other VIPs in the Discord actually called it too, but he called it first, I believe, and told me. So the credit's going to him. Y'all can get off me. So magazines show ammo count instead of guessing, which I'm cool with again, you know, kind of streamline it. One thing I want to talk about is the AI emotion that kind of got a little overhyped. And um, we have another example here where he just kind of stops and turns around and not really, you know, having an emotional reaction to what's going on. So I'm not looking too much into it, guys. It's a it's an early access. And even if they're just kind of dumb and, you know, they're not always acting right, it's still going to be a lot of fun. Right. But yeah, it's not anywhere near perfect, but I'm sure they'll get there. You know, they're absolutely motivated. So your sprint stamina, a lot of people think you're going to just be able to sprint all over the place. From how I've kind of gauged it based on your weight, from what I've seen, you got maybe 20 or 30 seconds of sprint, maybe based on your weight. So you're not going to just be able to sprint everywhere and, you know, gung-ho people, call of duty people, and, you know, it's not going to happen. So that sprint's very important. And I'm, I'm curious if it'll have an effect on your overall accuracy if you are tired. Another thing I want to talk about is it's a pretty cool mechanism. I only really noticed it when allies were shooting over the person we were watching but a suppression mechanic a pretty clear-cut suppression mechanic so the lean dude the leaning is very slight very subtle it looks clean when you're looking at someone else do it i love it it's not drastic it's not overcompensated it looks very beautiful and when you snap your cheek down while you're adsing um, i believe gecko caught this for us when you're aiming it's a separate mechanic and it looks very good people would want to talk about the clunkiness of their movement but when you actually see how they're doing subtle movements it looks really good i know the sprinting and the walking isn't great but how they're doing subtle movements is very accurate very cool speaking of that so like a low ready high ready looks like there's different levels of trotting how you're walking moving and you can actually move your gun similar to ready or not putting your gun down putting your gun across you so you can pick up speed a little bit instead of having like lifting it up with both arms and having it pointing straight out which that's awesome that's real right another thing too is we can rotate items when they zoom out on the map here at the very bottom you can see the, the mouse and everything about you're going to be able to rotate items so that's good when you're trying to min max loot but yeah that's everything we got guys pretty solid things that definitely need to be worked on but again it's an early access so i'm definitely surprised with it i'm curious why the game's delayed when it looks that good but it's up to them and i'd rather them take their time and polish it out if there is some stuff like that so yeah if you need to keep up with all the gray zone warfare stuff make sure you subscribe turn on notifications and give me a thumbs up on the video if you learned anything new guys helps me out a lot appreciate it so that's all i have for y'all now i will catch you on the next video appreciate it